you know, I think we think, oh, well, I received grace at salvation or I'm, sometimes I'll be hard on myself and think I'm shocked that I still need it. Mm. Like I'm shocked that I still fell that way or yelled at my kids or sinned in that way. Mm. And yes, we're always being sanctified, but I think sometimes it's like, I will be shocked. It's like, because it is for the journey, we don't have to be shocked at any age yeah. when we come at the feet of Jesus right. and repent and ask mm. forgiveness because it is for the journey. I get overwhelmed when I look too far down the line. Mm. If I That's just look at what's awesome. in front of me, yeah. I really don't get overwhelmed. If you think, oh, I just need to get through today or this task, or I just need to grieve this diagnosis in that example, or for me, what I'm going through with some of our stuff with our family, I just need to sit in this season. Mm -hmm. I don't have to have those seasons figured out or those plans mm -hmm. or those answers. Mm -mm. And the spiritual aspect of that is really powerful mm -hmm. and the grace and the provision for what's in front of you. Like you said, the fish and that, the grace for what's in front of you. But there's a really practical practical mm -hmm. application to that. There's a really practical to help you narrow down your to-do list of 50 things to the yes. one yes. that's in front of you, to the um, action you need to take today mm -hmm. of all the stuff that's cluttering your mind. And I think for um, women that are busy, that are overwhelmed, that are exhausted, mm -hmm. um, that can be really freeing to say, no, you don't have to have all that figured out. Yeah. And you may not feel like you have grace for all that, but when you get there, you will. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I just love that reminder that it's just, if you can just focus on what's in front of you, God has grace for that. Mm -hmm. He does. And yes, I think that the, I, I always say this, the older you get, <laughs> you can look back, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And so yes. even Jesus prayed, give us this day, our mm -hmm. daily bread. Yeah. That's right. Yes. Give awesome. me what I need to mm -hmm. make it through the day. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And that short-sightedness. That's, right. That's right. Mm -hmm. But then you look back and you think, oh, that was for the long haul. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. right. That grace for the day was for that season <laughs> yes. of my yes. life. That's right. Yes. Yes. Right? And then it changes to a new season and I can do all seasons through Christ right. who strengthens me. But I think, um, you know, I, even as you were talking, Amy, some of my examples are where I go back into taking the reins myself. Like yes. I'll lay it down. I'm like, okay, Lord, yes, I trust you. And then like five minutes later or the next day, it's like I find myself falling into the yes. same temptation of like, me even too. a whisper of like, well, you need to do this and you need to do that. And if you don't do this, then, the, you know, I just, yeah. I yeah. love that reminder of it's this is daily laying down. And the more like any habit, the more you do it, the more it becomes muscle memory where it does get a little bit easier. Yes. But I think just that that freedom and reminder that this is going to be an ongoing process, yeah. the restoration, the laying down, the surrender, yeah. the repentance. Yeah. It's yeah. not something mm -hmm. we just do once and we check that box. It's yeah. it's an mm -hmm. ongoing mm -hmm. thing. As well, I can verify us. after yeah. 70 yeah. years, you're yeah. going to need more. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love Hebrews 4, 16. Let us then with confidence yes. 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 come to the throne of grace yeah. that we may receive yeah. mercy I love that. and find help. Oh, yeah. There's mm -hmm. humility in that, too. It, yeah. It's... Yeah. it's you know, I think we think, oh, well, I received grace at salvation or I'm, sometimes I'll be hard on myself and think I'm shocked that I still need it. Mm. Like I'm shocked that I still fell that way or yelled at my kids or sinned in that way. Mm. And yes, we're always being sanctified. Mm. But I think sometimes it's like, I will be shocked. It's like, because it is for the journey, we don't have to be shocked at any age yeah. when we come at the feet of Jesus right. and repent and ask mm -hmm. forgiveness because it is for the journey. Yeah. You know? But he mm. never, the enemy never stops trying to tempt us right. to trade our position for God. Yep. Yes. Never. Yeah. Whether it is dealing with shame, right. and he's like, "Wait a minute, is your yeah. your opinion more important right. than God's?" Right. Uh, and All of our like, feelings. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We put first. Yeah. 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 And I think when grace is missing, <laughs> when grace is really missing, that's a clear sign. Mm -hmm. I'm operating outside. I need that's to good. repent. That's yeah. a good if there word. is yes. no more yes. grace yes. here, I'm doing word. this by the flesh. Mm -hmm. I'm striving. That's I'm right. trying to make it happen on my own. God. Well, okay, if there's no grace, then that means you, you know, you're not helping me. You're not right. empowering me. I love how in Psalm 1835, David said this. He said, your one version that I really loved and I memorized when I was a kid is your condescension mm. makes me great. Mm. And that word is translated graciousness. It's also mm. translated correction. Mm. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, his, it, God condescends almost like a parent would to a toddler. Mm -hmm. Right. To go, I know you don't yeah. understand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know you don't. But if you'll trust me mm -hmm. yeah. and just obey, I'm going to get you through this. And I think mm -hmm. that is the, the part where grace confronts yeah. me is going, okay, Amy, are you trying to get through this process without grace? Man, it hurts. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. nobody wants to go to the dentist without Novocaine. <laughs> <laughs> nobody wants to go through It's like, I, I want the end result, That's but right. I, don't, I don't want to have to go through the yeah. process without grace. And right. grace right. is like, you know, that numbing agent yeah. almost yes. where it's like, you, you can get through this. I'm going to be with you every step of the way. I yelled at my son. 
I don't want to make it seem like that's the only time I've ever yelled at him, but this one particular time, I was beyond at the end of my rope, unbelievably stressed, and he what he pushed me way past the point, and I screamed. Like, it was this visceral, I'm embarrassed to talk about it, scream, to the point that I, I really did not like myself afterwards. And I, I had to repent, and not just ask forgiveness for my son, which I definitely did, but I had to repent even before the Lord and go, I don't want to be a mom that yells. There's no excuse. Even if I'm stressed, even if he pushes me way past my breaking point, which he does for the record, there's still, that's not who I want to be. And that's not what I want to do. And something was so um, convicting and humiliating to me about that moment that truly since then, when he has pushed me past my breaking point, and he has, I will take a deep breath and I will actually walk away. Because I, I don't want to give in to that temptation to scream, even though everything in me wants, me to, wants to scream. And so I think when you, when you repent before the Lord, it doesn't mean you'll never sin again. It doesn't mean I'll never yell again or, or, or struggle with being frustrated with my kids again. But I think transformation actually happens there. So it's, there's, this is two part. There's asking forgiveness from the person you've wronged, if that's relevant. But when you repent, when you go before the Lord, I think the transformation is what is so incredible. He will give you the strength and the grace to be better, to not do that again or not do it just often or whatever. He will give you the strength to grow as the Holy Spirit sanctifies us. But it happens in the moment of repentance, of turning away from that way and say, I don't want to go that way. I don't want to be that person. God, help me go the other way. And um, God answers our prayers. He answers our prayers and He blesses our heart to do better. The the thing that stuck out to me is like, and He calls what happened beautiful, yeah. yes. not the church. What would have not 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 our ideas of beauty. Our ideas of beauty are always oh, perfection yeah. and Pinterest and monogram smock dresses and all yeah. these. And God's going, oh no, what I call beautiful yeah. Yeah. is what actually transpires. This yeah. is what was that's beautiful. the story. And I just yeah. I, I think that's powerful, yeah. especially for. Um, in our gener- we don't have to go on this rabbit trail, but in our generation of social media, yeah. where we all we see is perfection from others. And mm-hmm. I've noticed we often, myself, and even in my circle of, of women and friends, we judge others by what they're doing well. Oh my gosh, she's amazing. She's right. so perfect. Right. She's so put together. Look I how know. great she is on camera. <laughs> Look how much she knows the Bible. And we judge ourselves by what we're doing wrong. I yelled at my kids today. I forgot mm. their lunch. I forgot the, right? And so we create this giant gap yeah. When in reality, we're all doing some things well and we're all mm-hmm. needing grace. Yes. And I think that when we share those struggles, where it's appropriate and, mm-hmm. and when it makes right. sense, it creates such a relatability and connection Absolutely. where the grace just multiplies. Yeah. And yeah. I think it was um, Pastor Craig Rochelle that said, people will be impressed by your success, but they will connect with your weakness. Any good movie has conflict. It makes you on the edge of your seat. How are they going to work this thing out? That's not just what makes the story interesting. It what makes you care about the outcome. So if there was a story and everybody was happy and successful and had money and health and they just went about their day, you'd be bored. Can you imagine a movie that's titled Mission Totally Possible? Like, nobody's excited to watch that movie. It's interesting because it's impossible. The same is true for our lives. The same is true in our own stories. You know, we want to rip out the pages of the story, uh, stories of our stories of brokenness or difficulty or tragedy. Those, I believe, are some of the most beautiful parts of our story because they invite the solution that God has. They invite redemption. They invite hope. Even if, even if here on this earth, you don't feel like, oh, that tragedy serves a purpose that you can see. Other people might find hope or connection to you and you going through something really difficult or or they're going through it now and you went through it and you can be a source of comfort for them. Nothing is wasted in the kingdom of God. Nothing is wasted. And there's nothing that's happening in our stories that's outside of God's sovereignty. And so we can trust that He is good even when we don't understand it. And He will give us grace to get through those hard times, knowing that that's not the end of the story. At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace 
go around the world. And it's because of you that partner with us that this ministry continues. God bless you.